Hi, friends. Um, so thank you for the introduction, Sophia. Um, harassmap.org is an online uh, mapping tool that, that allows people to um, go online and report harassment, either through the website or uh, through text messaging. And we work uh, collaboratively with um, other NGOs. So we are, Harassmap is, um, I am one of the co-founders. We are uh, four co-founders and a staff of about um, 20 people. And we work collaboratively with other NGOs um, as a sexual harassment task force. Some of us are legal experts, some of us are sociologists, um, some of us are psychologists, and that there are street uh, rescue volunteers that, um, that we, uh, like a task force that we organize and gather across these NGOs like Shoftat uh, Harush and Opantish, which is Operation Anti-Sexual Harassment. Um, I'll start with some uh, quick uh, statistics. Um, the UN Women's Study of 2013 uh, reports that 96.5% of women have not only been sexually harassed, but phys physically assaulted on the street. 91% uh, of Egyptian women say uh, they feel unsafe on the street. Um, on the other hand, Egyptian Center for Women's Rights reports in 2008 that 86% of men have admitted to have harassed women before. And according to our own uh, reports and analysis, 50% of the harassers that we see in our reports are uh, children. So that tells you that the trend is on the rise. Uh, these children are growing up uh, and the uh, phenomenon is um, increasing. It's even changing face. Uh, I, I grew up in Egypt building my life around sexual harassment, streets to avoid, times to avoid, clothes to avoid. Um, I even planned my, uh, my, my, my classes at, at college uh, in a way that I would only have to leave the house two, two days a week in, instead of five so that I don't have to suffer the emotional burden of being harassed every day. None of this worked, I still got harassed. Come 2008, uh, the Egyptian Center for Women's Rights uh, started talking about this problem and uh, after three big uh, gang assaults that happened um, on the street, one in 2004 in a, in a music concert, um, one is the Black Wednesday of May 2005 uh, by the police over women protesters, and one in 2006 uh, on, a, on a, a film crew of women uh, in a movie premiere in downtown. Uh, so after the Egyptian Success Center for Women's Rights starts to study this and uh, uh, creates the first uh, um, scientifically researched sample analysis, in 2007, uh, the First Lady back then, uh, Suzanne Mubarak, and head of the National Council for Women, goes on uh, a press release in TV and says there is no such thing as a phenomenon of sexual harassment, and all of the incidents that happened are uh, personal, uh, individual outliers. So we knew we had to do something about it. So in, in the same year, we started um, HarassMap, and we started collecting uh, evidence of the existence of this problem. There was media blackout at that time on the issue. Guests on TV uh, conf very confidently uh, blamed women for their dresses and they were not challenged on this. The, there were no guests, other speakers to challenge this. Um, a year and a half later, after our work, more than a couple of wide-reaching newspapers started uh, blocking two full pages for a monthly coverage of sexual harassment, showing young girls, um, many of them veiled, uh, having to suffer so much humiliation and uh, molestation on the street. Uh, again, a lot of it was by young, young men and boys. Uh, then the revolution came. Uh, we had a very conspicuous experience. Uh, the first day, 18 days of the revolution, uh, we had no, there were, there were no public, re I didn't hear of one report uh, of sexual harassment in, in the square. In fact, we actually went out, out of our way and asked women uh, to ask their friends and, and we asked all of our friends, we, I, I did not find one case of sexual harassment. Uh, this welcome break in history um, was an important reminder for us that this is not natural. And there are actually certain factors of despair that come together and, and, and uh, invite such malbehavior. Um, after this very nice break, uh, the conditions drastically changed uh, between 2011 and 2013. There were at least five gang assaults and rapes captured on video. Lara Logan, Carolyn Singh, the Blue Bra Girl, and the documented lawsuit of the virginity tests, and many others. Uh, and on the second 
anniversary of the revolution, our rescue volunteers who go out on the, on the square to uh, rescue uh, incidents of gang assaults reported 24 cases of sexual assault and rape in less than four hours. Between this and the next anniversary, in a year gap, 200 documented sexual assault and gang rapes in demonstrations. We're talking here about a five to 50 men uh, circling around one woman, singling out a girl on the street and uh, gr groping her body and telling her things like, don't worry, we're protecting you, while they're actually tearing her body with knives and uh, tearing her clothes with knives and uh, her fingers are literally inside her body. I'm sorry for the detail, but you have to know this. Earlier this year, one of these knives uh, killed a very brave young man while he's trying to rescue the, one of the victims. And what do all these cases have in common? Not one perpetrator was convicted. Not one government official, not one street boy. So what are we doing? We're, um, harass map is working on four fronts. We collect, first of all, we collect reports of harassment. We give voice to um, harassment survivors that would otherwise um, hesitate to speak. And we have referral services, things like um, we, when we get a report, we uh, respond back by um, helping on things like how to file a police, police report, uh, uh, referrals to le legal advice and psychological help if needed. And uh, for example, classes on um, self-defense uh, uh, in, in the area if the, if the um, survivor is interested. And uh, the third thing is that the actual mapping of the incidents. Uh, this is important because many people still continue to deny the, 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 the per pervasiveness of the harassment, at least. And this recorded narrative is a very important collective memory for, for, uh, uh, to, uh, to stand against this denial. And the most important aspect that we work on is the local community visits. We have about um, 500 uh, volunteers that go into their local communities and um, actually take a map of their neighborhood and show it to the, you know, the shop owners and uh, 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 building security, things like that, and show them that they're suffering sexual harassment in the area. And this is not, this is not a good uh, state of affairs. And this effect affects them as a community. It takes away business. It stops women from going to work, to school. And it takes away the, the safety of, of our neighborhoods that we've always been proud of. Um, now, what did we learn? Uh, one very first important lesson, uh, don't assume you know a, a place just before, because you've lived there or because you have a master's degree in sociology or don't, don't assume that you know a community. What we found is that uh, when we worked in um, uh, urban centers, we've uh, suffered from the fact that our own volunteers are sexist and that we have to convince them that it's not the women's fault for being harassed. On the, on the other hand, in, in Upper Egypt, which was supposed to be one of the most conservative um, regions in Egypt, uh, the young men were very, were um, essentially accepting the fact that it's not the woman's fault and uh, uh, willing to work with us on that. Um, in smaller communities also, where people know each other, harassment is less common than in urban centers. And um, uh, because of our effort and the efforts of other NGOs as well, uh, harassment is much more easily recognized now. There is a, we have, a, uh, harassmap.org has a pool of the reports that, um, that, people, that people put together. And um, this is actually a, 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 a rich source of collective memory on the details of harassment. And, uh, even though this is not a, like a, a scientifically designed sample, it's very important for the, for the qualitative and for uh, um, uh, people like, who are interested to work on the matter, like artists, filmmakers, anthropologists, and other people who are actually interested in the very detail of what happens in sexual harassment. People, we've noticed it's, it was very interesting that uh, the, the respondents were very, honest about the details, they said very important details that we, that are important for the society to know. They're very shocking, but they're very important. Um, and the finding that warms my heart personally is that we are um, finding up and speaking against harassment, by, uh, whether by other men or by women. 
Uh, I thought this was going to be another uh, 10 years. They're happening. Um, an important challenge is that technology, even though it has made our work easier, um, it makes it more difficult. The gang rapes captured on video was something we've never imagined to see in a million years, but it's happening. Um, and we have to live with, with the sadness that we were not able to rescue these women in time. But, we, but, but what, what also happened as a positive um, externality of this is that uh, people in the local communities that we work with become extremely upset after a, a big media uh, incident happen like, uh, happens like that. They become very ex upset and they actually start acting in their own personal lives on it. Communities. Uh, and this um, makes the lesson much more ingrained. They cannot unlearn what they've learned. And this is very important. We know that we're making, we know that sexual harassment has not decreased, but because of consistent local grassroots effort, we're making slow but steady progress, and there is no turning back on sexual harassment. We will put an end to this sad chapter. Thank you very much.